Hey everyone, it's Katie, and I wanted to make a quick video today just to talk about the self-sabotaging nature of alcohol addiction. I was thinking about this because, you know, it's been a year and a half since I started the Sinclair Method, almost. Um, I don't drink anymore. It's been months since I've had a drink. And so with a clear mind, I'm kind of looking back on all the times that I was drinking to excess, you know, nearly every single night. And how many times, you know, hundreds and hundreds of times where I would drink myself to oblivion, putting myself in harm's way, um, putting myself in really uh, not safe situations, and then waking up the next day so incredibly sick from all the alcohol poisoning. And I did this to myself for about 10 years. And of course I would, you know, go into drinking thinking, oh, I'm, it's a way for me to relax or, you know, I'm, I'm using it to unwind after a stressful day or I'm out with friends and it's fun. But I feel like that was just the addict, addict part of me trying to convince myself that it was okay to drink when deep down I knew I had this problem, this problem that caused me to drink till I was really, really harming myself. And would I ever do that to somebody else? Like if you think about the pain that you inflict upon yourself when you're drinking to excess, I couldn't imagine doing that to somebody else, forcing someone to drink that much that causes them to throw up and be sick and be, be in uh, unsafe situations. Like the amount of pain and self-sabotage we inflict on ourselves when it's disguised in this thing to relax, um, it's just really interesting to me and kind of eye-opening to me to how much I was harming myself back then. And even now, though, I will say I, I do have some self-sabotage tendencies and I'm just questioning if it's human nature to do this in a sense. Um, I made a post on my Instagram about it because, you know, with alcohol out of my life, I'm so much healthier now and, you know, obviously I don't use it as a way to abuse myself anymore. But I noticed recently through social media, I'm self-sabotaging myself. I'm going to people's like Instagram or Facebook or online feeds and just spending so much time scrolling, look at, looking at every picture of, you know, their perfectly filtered highlight reel life, piecing it all together, you know, making a story in my mind that, wow, this person is amazing, they're talented, they're beautiful, they've got all of this, I'm never gonna have that, like, I'm a worthless piece of crap, <laughs> kind of in a sense, like, and I realized, like, I had been doing this and I'd be on social media and just feel so awful um and i realized i was i was still continuing to use it even though it was making me feel so awful and i realized that was a tendency for me to self-sabotage and i'll say you know i love social media there are so many inspirational people out there who i follow and it can bring me a lot of joy just like how when you drink alcohol if you have one glass of wine it can be a really beautiful experience but then there's this almost like human nature tendency sometimes to really take it to the extreme and use something that can really be good for us in some ways and use it in a way that's going to harm us. So just having some awareness on this, I guess, and I'm I'm curious to hear from others in ways where you've caught yourself sab self-sabotaging. Like, I know for me, alcohol addiction was a huge part of my life. I knew it was harming me, but I was also so addicted that drinking just to relieve the chatter in my mind to shut that up was like such a relief it was worth any consequence and once i started drinking it was so hard for me to stop the chatter would be there unless i just continued to drink and drink and drink until i got to blackout drunk often so i was definitely sabotaging myself um, with the alcohol and you know a lot of healing has happened and a lot of stuff has come up since i started on the sinclair method you know i was kind of naive going into it thinking oh i just want to to um, cut down on my drinking, I want to be healthier, I don't want to need to drink every day. And that certainly happened, but when that started to happen, all of these things started to surface that I had been denying the past 10 years as I was drinking. All of these things that I manifested in this kind of like alcohol fog were starting to manifest and come to my to my face and come to my reality and I no longer was perceiving alcohol as a way to numb out anymore and so I really had to deal with these things and it was really hard and really painful and so if you are someone who's going on the Sinclair method you know you have to have this realistic expectation it's not a magic pill and I hear from people so often who expect it to be this magic pill that's just gonna fix and cure everything and it's not gonna be that it's going to be training wheels it's going to be this way for me how I perceived it 
It allowed me to um, reduce my drinking so much and ch quiet the chatter of cravings that were there so that I could really implement some mindfulness and awareness in my life and develop the strength and tools in order to change myself. Obviously, I'm a huge supporter and advocate of the Sinclair Method. I think the medication has so much power to do so much, but it's not everything. Like I went through the biggest breakdown and kind of breakthrough the past six months or eight months um, since starting the Sinclair Method and have needed to get support, have needed to get therapy, have needed to take workshops, have been reading tons of books, really learning new self-care practices that actually feel good. Like back when I was drinking, I would say wine was my way to relax at the end of the day. But again, that was just like this massive illusion. I was telling myself it wasn't ever relaxing me. If anything, it was just inducing my anxiety worse and I'd wake up the next day with, with just pounding heart and horrible anxiety, which I've since learned is actually a withdrawal symptom of alcohol, which is kind of like a heavy pill to swallow that I was going through alcohol withdrawal every day. But now my self-care practice is things that are actually helpful to me, like taking a bath or watching a movie or going on a walk, like things that are actually benefiting myself rather than harming myself. Um, but yeah, still noticing this tendency to kind of sabotage in a way through social media and I'm sure there are other ways that I do it. And so this whole notion of self-sabotage, I'm just so curious and I, w I want to hear from others what your experience is like in this cycle of self-sabotage, especially in the throes of alcohol addiction. I'm sure, you know, anyone who's addicted to alcohol or has felt dependent on it at all knows what it's like to sabotage yourself and it feels like you're stuck in this this cycle of that and it's so easy to hate yourself and want to cause harm to yourself but if you step back and think would you do that to somebody else who you loved like no you wouldn't the saying goes you know you have to really take care of yourself you have to really love yourself before you can love somebody else and so when you're self-sabotaging there's no way you can love yourself and so getting out of that cycle of alcohol addiction where it's controlling you and causing you to hurt yourself it's so eye-opening and for me it's allowed me to see the other ways where I'm more subtly self-sabotaging myself like the example I, sh I just mentioned with social media. So I'm, um, yeah, tell me what your experience is like with self-sabotage, what you've learned. Um, thank you so much for watching and talk to you again soon.